Reckoning. The fifth and final episode of Showtime's crime series Waco, The Aftermath, centers on the Waco trial jury's decision and the defendant's following punishment. Although the defendants initially experience the joy of triumph, Judge Smith obstructs it. Gary Nosner and Angie Graham are alerted to the possibility of an impending attack by Carol Howe after she escapes alone city. Gary makes every effort to stop this from happening, but his supervisor interferes with him. Incredibly shocking judgment regarding the Waco trial defendants is made by Judge Smith as the series comes to a close, and tragedy strikes Oklahoma City. You have come to the right site if you want a thorough analysis of the fifth episode's conclusion. Spoilers follow. Waco, the aftermath finale recap. In the first scene of Reckoning, Carol is looking through Andy the German's caravan when she discovers a list of chemicals. Carol is finally apprehended by Pappy Miller and Andy, who question her about why she was in the German's caravan. Carol flees after realizing her life is in danger and eventually runs across Gary and Angie. Gary gives a courtroom testimony during the Waco trial. Dan Cogdell questions Gary about why his team was left out of the meeting when the decision to raid the Mount Carmel Center was made. Gary explains that the negotiation team was left out of the important decision-making meeting because its opinions did not coincide with those of the tactical team. Cogdell proves, via Gary, that the Branch Davidians had no desire to perish. Gary claims in court that his team could have gotten a lot more of them out, perhaps all of them. This testimony supports Cogdell's claim. Cogdell begs the jury in his closing remarks to take into account the Branch Davidians' helplessness since they were not given enough time to escape the Mount Carmel Center and preserve themselves. When Carol shares the list of chemicals with Gary and Angie, the FBI agent realizes they are constructing a bomb. Alan Sanborn, his superior, is informed of the situation, but he rejects the notion. Alan is informed that there are domestic threats they should be aware of by Mitch Decker, who meets him with Gary. Before deciding whether to launch an inquiry into the potential bombing, Alan encounters Carol. He challenges her veracity by asking her why she was in touch with Wild Bill, her ex-boyfriend and a former resident of Alone City. David Course learned from flashback scenes that George Roden ended up in a psychiatric hospital. He asserted the same as he led his group to the Mount Carmel Center. If George's followers can't practice celibacy and abstinence, he asked them to leave the area. After deciding to pop the question to Jocelyn Bryant, Cogdell learns that she was a spy who had vanished at the conclusion of the trial. The jury exonerates Clive Doyle, Ruth Riddle, Livingstone Fagan, and Paul Fata of conspiracy to murder federal officials and aiding and abetting the murder of federal agents following the protracted trial. Despite being found guilty of using an illegal firearm to commit a crime, Hall, Livingstone, and Ruth's convictions on the guns counts are overturned by Cogdell since they weren't proven guilty of the actual crime. Waco, the aftermath ending. Why does Judge Smith change jury's verdict? Why do Ruth, Livingstone, and Paul get convicted? Although originally cleared of all charges, Clive, Ruth, Paul, and Livingstone later get new sentences from Judge Smith. They are impounded and brought before the court. Ruth, Paul, and Livingstone are found guilty of the crimes committed with the use of weapons by Smith, who then reinstates the firearms charges. However, they are each given jail terms of 5, 15, and 40 years, respectively, in addition to fines of more than $1 million. By rejecting the judgment of the jurors, who are only the representatives of society, Cogdell charges Smith with serving the interests of the government. Even though Smith is supposed to accept the jury's decision, he considers the gun's charges to convict Ruth, Paul, and Livingstone of the crimes for which the jurors found them not guilty. Smith refuses to provide an explanation when Kajal requests one. The jury and the defense were both astonished by the judge's decision to sentence the three offenders. According to the program, jury foreman Sarah Bain remarked, even five years is too severe a penalty for what we believe to be a minor charge. I take full responsibility for this. Our work may have resulted in a 30-year reduction in these sentences if we had done it correctly. In response to Smith's verdict, Bain told the New York Times, I am really angry, and at least two-thirds of the jury will be as least as outraged as I am. Another juror in the case, Mary Pardo, made it obvious that Smith disregarded the jury's decision. The jury's wishes were ignored by the judge. They claimed there was no conspiracy to murder agents. But the judge today declared there was and jailed the defendants accordingly. In the same interview with the New York Times, Pardo claimed he disregarded the jury's verdicts. Smith explained to the press that the federal sentencing standards served as the foundation for his decision. His justification, according to the defense attorney, was calculated for the media. Why does Timothy McVeigh bomb Oklahoma City? In a separate plot, Timothy McVeigh drives a vehicle rigged with a bomb to the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, on the second anniversary of the end of the Waco siege. When McVeigh leaves the truck, the bomb detonates. McVeigh blows up the federal building to show his opposition to the government. He has believed that the federal government has been murdering its own citizens who had the freedom to practice and spread their ideas, no matter how backwards those beliefs may be. His conviction was enhanced by the Waco massacre, which prompted him to take revenge on the government on the anniversary of the massacre. In truth, McVeigh gave the same justification in a letter he sent to his pal Bob Papovich. The domestic terrorist requested Tracy McVeigh, a reporter for The Observer, to write his pal and ask for the same thing. 
I decided to bomb a government building since it was more effective than my other possibilities. According to The Guardian, McVeigh stated in the letter that the bombing was first and foremost retaliatory in nature, a counterattack for the cumulative raids that federal agents had participated in over the preceding years. According to him, federal operations have become increasingly militaristic and violent, to the point at Waco where our government, like the Chinese, was using tanks against its own citizens. Federal agents were acting more and more like soldiers, adopting military terminology, attire, organization, tactics, and mindset. They were also escalating their behavior. The letter from McVeigh added, Accordingly, this bombing was intended as a preemptive strike against these forces and their command and control centers within the federal building. He went on to say, I decided to send a message to a government that was becoming increasingly hostile. By bombing a government building and the government employees within that building who represent that government. Explaining why he specifically picked the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Facility. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe for more.